In this lesson, we're going to take a look at an application of a trigonometric graph, and that is we're going to solve a word problem that describes a situation that will involve a sine or a cosine function graph. Okay, uh, let's just read the problem and then we'll go ahead and, uh, and get started on the, uh, on the solution. It says a paddle wheel has a radius of three meters and its axle is one meter above the surface of the water. The wheel rotates once every 18 seconds. A frog swimming two meters under the water grabs onto the wheel at its lowest point and goes for a ride for two complete revolutions. Draw a graph showing the height of the frog during its trip. Okay, so I guess the first thing we need to uh, do is get kind of a, a visual representation of what's going on here. It says that a paddle wheel has a radius of three meters. So that means from its axle it will be above uh, three meters and below three meters. Now the axle is one meter uh, above the surface of the water. Okay, right there. We'll just try and do that a little straighter. One meter above the surface of the water. So I'm going to go ahead and put that axle in uh, right there. One meter above the water. And we'll make the uh, grid here uh, that this is every square represents one. Okay, now that would mean then the radius of three meters, well that could be represented by this line. It will reach a maximum height of three and then one, two, three, it will reach a minimum depth right there. And the surface of the water, if we want to kind of get a visual representation, is right there. Okay, so there's the surface of the water and the paddle wheel itself uh, will be sort of in uh, this kind of idea right here where there's the center of the wheel and it has all these paddles on it going underwater and then above the water. Okay, so there's the paddle wheel and we'll assume it is spinning this way so that the boat moves. Okay, so now we've got uh, this frog and it says a frog swimming two meters underneath the water so there is negative two right there and that would correspond to the um, and we'll put a four up there uh, to the lowest point uh, on the wheel so if the frog grabs hold uh, down here at this depth it will then get carried around the wheel and it's going to go up and then back down underwater and back up and then underwater. Now the question is how long will it take uh, this to go around one complete cycle? Well we're told that the wheel rotates once every 18 seconds. So why don't we take a look here and we will uh, sort of decide what each tick or each grid mark is going to represent with regards to time. Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 um, is right to there. Okay? Now, I'm supposed to show two complete cycles. So I can't have every tick represent one, but I can have every tick represent two seconds. And that would mean that this would be right here uh, 36 seconds. Okay, and time will be represented on this axis here and it will be represented in seconds. This is the height of the frog outside of the water and it is a function of time. Okay, all right, so every two seconds, so there's two, four, six, uh, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 16, 18. So there's 18 seconds, and then 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and then another 18. All right. So if the frog started here in the water at negative 2, it was underwater, it would then complete one full revolution around the wheel, and it would be back underwater again at 18 seconds. Okay, well halfway between that is nine seconds and that's when it would be at the opposite side, that is above. So 
let's find 2, 4, 6, 8, and there's 10, so 9 would be right in the middle here, right about there. Okay? Well, if it took 9 seconds to go from all the way down there up to the top, then halfway through it would be right here on the same level as the axis, and that would be, well, half of 9 is 4 and a half, so 2, 4, and 4 and a half would be slightly right about there, and then from this side, 2, 4, and then slightly right there. Okay, I'm just going to continue this for two cycles, so right there, and then halfway we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, so 2, 4, 6, 8, and then 9 would be right there, half again is right about there, and half again is right about there. So there is the path of the frog as it goes around the paddle wheel and it goes up and down underwater and then back up again. All right. So there's a graph showing the height of the frog during its trip. Okay. Well, let's, before we move on to the next part of the questions, let's just summarize what we know about this curve. This curve looks like a cosine function curve, doesn't it? Because it actually starts right at a minimum value. Now the normal cosine curve we know starts at a maximum, right? It goes down and back up. So this is a negative cosine curve. It's reflected. Okay, what else do we know? Um, we know that the amplitude is 3. So the amplitude is 3. And we know that because that's the radius of the wheel and that's the distance from the axis to a max or the axis to a min. Okay, um, we know the vertical displacement and that's where the axis is. And that is at positive 1. Okay, um, the phase shift, that is, how much is this cosine function that I'm seeing, and if, uh, just make sure you see it, I see one complete cosine function right here, going up there, coming back down, and ending right there. Okay, so that's the cosine function I'm seeing. So that cosine function has not been phase shifted at all. So the phase shift is zero, there is none. Okay, um, the last thing we need to do is because the units on the x-axis is time, I need to figure out the k value. And the k value is going to line up the grid, the scale on the x-axis, so that one tick of unit of time, in this case one second, will also mean one degree. Okay, so what would we have to do to align uh, those two graphs together, those two scales? Well, all we do is we take 360 and we divide that by the period length. And in this case, the period length is 18 seconds. So when we do that division, we find that k is equal to 20. Okay, so there are my observations about this picture, this diagram, the curve. So let's move on to the next questions and in the next question we're going to be asked to actually write an equation that will model this uh, movement, this behavior. So to summarize for the first one, draw a graph showing the height of the frog during its trip for two complete revolutions. There is the graph of that trip. Okay, so here's the next part of this question. It says, in part B, write an equation for the function in A, and in part C, use your equation to determine to one decimal place the height of the frog after 11 seconds. All right, well, let's just go ahead and remind ourselves of the characteristics of that graph that we saw. And the characteristics were that we saw that it was a negative cosine graph. It seemed to match that shape perfectly. It had an amplitude of 3, a vertical displacement of positive 1, a phase shift of 0, there was no phase shift, and a k value we calculated to be 20. 
and that would mean that the equation or the height of the frog at a particular time t would be equal to negative amplitude it was a cosine function k value no phase shift but there is a vertical displacement okay now to use that equation to determine to one decimal place the height of the frog after 11 seconds well we're going to sub t equals 11 uh, into our equation so I want to know what is the height when the time is 11 and that's going to be equal to negative 3 cosine 20 times 11 plus 1 okay well 20 times 11 we know that is 220 so I can just say alright well this is equal to negative 3 times the cosine of 220 plus 1 okay well the cosine of 220 well is negative 0 0.766 zero four four etc okay plus one all right so negative three times negative zero point seven so I'm gonna multiply that value by negative three and we get two point two nine eight and then plus one and that gives me a final answer of 3.298. Now round that to 3.3 meters. Okay. Well, how can I check to see if that's reasonable? Is 3.3 meters, does it sound right? Well, if I remember from the original graph, right, there was a wheel and the wheel went up as high as 4 and it went down as low as negative 2 and that was the circle right it went around and around now it had an axis at 1 right there okay so after 11 seconds where would the frog be well it takes how long to get around one complete cycle and we knew that it takes uh, 18 seconds to get around one complete cycle because when we had 360 and we divided it by 18 that gave us our k factor of 20 okay so 18 seconds the frog got on here down at the bottom so let's put our little frog in green here this is where the frog got on and it took 18 seconds to go all the way around which mean 9 seconds would be right to there okay 11 seconds would be 2 seconds past that so it would be down to about here okay we know it wouldn't be back at the water level right because the water level was right there at 0 um, and it wouldn't even be down at one because it would take four and a half seconds to get from here to here right four point five seconds and we've only gone two seconds past the top so a value of three point three would match up with our diagram really nicely so eleven seconds three point three it matches what we would expect uh, on that graph and there's our answer okay so when you are solving word problems the most important thing to do is look for all the clues in the word problems associated with uh, the equation we're gonna write look for the clue for the amplitude 
look for the axis. Um, make sure that you are understanding how the period is expressed. Is it in minutes or seconds or hours? And use that value to calculate the K value and that will line up the grid so that degrees and time mean the exact same thing. Okay, there you go.